all, this is Halloween, and if you love cosplay and Halloween as much as I do, you may want to subscribe because I'm going to be showing you how to create some awesome looks without breaking the bank and maybe even using some items you already have at home. In today's episode, we're going to be recreating the Coraline doll. This is the rag doll from the 2009 Henry Selleck stop motion animation film, Coraline. Let's get started. For Coraline, I purchased these shoes and in the picture, they were yellow, but when I received them, they're more of a baseball glove sort of brown. So I decided, you know, rather than returning them, this is the color of my raincoat that I bought this yellow. So I went to Home Depot and I managed to find a yellow that matched the raincoat pretty good. So I'm going to be spray painting these shoes yellow. But first I want to remove the black laces because I do want these parts to remain black. I will be taping off the black bottoms as well. I want them to have black bottoms and black laces. So let's get started with that project and I'll take progress shots as we go. I ordered this wig specifically off of Amazon. I knew it was out there. I knew it existed. It's They call it a corpse bride wig, but it's actually made with yarn. Now, I personally wouldn't wear this for the corpse bride, but I think it's perfect for the Coraline doll because she is an actual doll and she has yarn hair. So I'm going to just give this wig a bob. I'm gonna cut the wig. It's not a great quality wig. Um, I cut some of the inside out because it was balled up in there and it was causing it to have kind of a funny shape. So I just trimmed the inside of it a bit. I'm gonna save this extra material in case I can use it for another costume. I did put in the description how much I paid for it and I bought it off of Amazon. The next thing I purchased was this shirt. I bought it from the thrift store. It was seven bucks, six ninety-eight, and this shirt here. Now I only bought this shirt because it was a lighter pink, and the Coraline doll had a coral shirt with light pink stripes on it. So I'm just gonna cut pink stripes out of this shirt, and I'm gonna sew it every other line onto this shirt. I'm not concerned about hemming it or it looking too perfect because she is a rag doll. Well, here she is, the Coraline doll. 
and I'd say that all of our hard work paid off. Now some things were purchased. We got the yellow jacket here, which by the way, not a bad price. I got it for like $21 online. I'll put all the information in the description down below, but it's really thin, so it won't be hot through the night. Uh, it would be very easy to wear. It's very lightweight. It's awesome. We did the shoes. We spray painted them. They didn't come in the right color, but I think they look great. I've got the shirt here, which I got from a thrift store and added on the, the lines. Now I didn't do the whole shirt front and back and I didn't even do all the way the bottom or the sleeves. Now you can do that if you want to, if you think you're gonna be taking the jacket off through the night, but I didn't do it because I won't be taking the jacket off. I like to give full character all night long. So that's how I did it. We've got the pantyhose, which were from Music Legs, also very inexpensive. And then I got a skirt here from the thrift store and added a little bit of an old costume there to the bottom to give it a raggy look. And I think this turned out great. She's gonna look like a rag doll because everything's a little ratty. And then we did the wig here. We made the barrette, which as you know, Coraline wears the dragonfly barrette. And then I had to make ears because I noticed online when I was looking at pictures of the doll, she had these big ears sticking out from her hair. So I went ahead and made ears with my Crayola Model Magic. Let's get started with our makeup. It's makeup time. For this look, you're pretty much gonna just need normal makeup for the most part. I do have a little bit of the Ben Nye character shadow because I'm gonna stencil my eyebrows on. I created a stencil with a piece of note card, like I recently started doing right there. Those are gonna be like the eyebrows. I'm gonna be using my Kat Von D foundation because again, it's like a paste and it'll cover any blemishes and make me look very pasty and doll-like. I've got my Ben Nye Spirit Gum, which I highly recommend if you're going to be making prosthetic pieces for your face with the Crayola Model Magic because it's a little stronger. It just makes everything stick really well. Better than the Halloween costume shop generic kind. Mehran also makes it. So if you wanna get Ben Nye or Mehran, doesn't matter. Both are good. We made our button eyes, which is a huge reason why I chose to do the doll version of Coraline instead of actual Coraline. I feel like the doll has more drama. First of all, she's a doll. Automatically, you're trying to make yourself look like a doll rather than a person. Claymation is actually very realistic, you know, more so than cartoon. So I felt like the doll was giving me more drama, more character. I don't think I'm gonna be wrong about that. I also have a Kat Von D contour palette that I really never ever use, but I am gonna use it for this. It's called Shade and Light. You can use any contour every shade you can think of in there pretty much and then i'm going to be using just a regular blush a pinky blush and that's it so we'll go ahead and, and start this i love Coraline. i think it's a great film uh i'm a huge tim burton fan so naturally i would love Coraline. it was very burton-esque so it came out in 2009 and Immediately I wanted to see it. I saw the previews. I actually, I think at, at first I thought it was Tim, a Tim Burton film coming out. Uh, the way it's made, it's a claymation stop motion film. And I, w I went and saw it and I was not disappointed. I've actually seen it a few times. The characters in it were great. I feel like, I'm gonna just start with my uh, foundation here. I feel like Henry Selleck kind of modeled the dad character after himself. If you haven't seen it, I don't actually need to do my eyes here because we're going to be putting the buttons on over my eyes. So I'm gonna try to avoid my other one. It's hard to think while I'm talking. <laughs> so I think Henry Selleck actually modeled the dad in the movie after himself. If you look at this guy, he totally reminds me of the dad in the film. But also the film is has a great storyline. It's about a little girl, probably a preteen young girl moving into a brand new house with her family her mom being being very business oriented and she's like the editor in chief of a magazine about gardening and the dad is the gardener and he 
you know, he's the one that's like very into botany and plants and all of that, but also he's a musician. So they move into this brand new house. She's got to meet all new friends and she's kind of lured into this other world by way of a secret door in the in the new home. She went exploring one day, she found the secret door and her friend who she called YB was a very strange little boy that she met that lived around the same area, was around the same age. And he was a chatterbox, he talked a lot. Immediately she was like, uh, why don't you ever shut up sort of thing. And he found this doll that this entity from another, basically another, an underworld created in the image of Coraline to lure her into this door that she had found. She goes in one night, you know, she finally gets in this door and it's a whole nother world. See, in her real life, she's turned off by her parents. You know, her mom's constantly involved in business. She doesn't have time for Coraline. She's very short tempered with her. And then the dad's just kind of goofy and unrelatable for her being a preteen and and she can't stand it because she, she's just trying to be Coraline and her parents aren't identifying with her, trying to be relatable. So she goes into this underworld and there's this like perfect mother that cooks her all the perfect meals, you know, all of her favorites and they're constantly gifting her with stuff. And they have this beautiful garden and the dad like flies a plane around this garden and he, he makes gorgeous music for her that's all about her. This whole other world is all about her. But eventually it turns out to be something that she did not bargain for. I have some powder here that I'm putting on. So the moral of the story basically was the grass isn't greener, always greener on the other side. That's what I took from it. It's a great film if you haven't already seen it. I really loved it. Like I said, if you love Tim Burton, you'd really like that film if you hadn't seen it yet or was, or if you were reluctant to watch it because you love Tim Burton so much. I mean, it's a great film. So all the claymation movies that have been made in Burton style have been pretty good. I don't know if you remember Nine from, I mean, that was probably from around the same time, I would imagine. Nine was pretty good. We're gonna start with our eyebrows and work our way down like we normally do. I made this stencil, hopefully it's good. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my brown character shadow and I'm gonna dampen my sponge here, get a little damp in the water. If you're just tuning into my videos, you will need a bowl of water and a sponge for the Ben Nye Aqua Paint because it's water activated. Hopefully you're not just tuning in. I mean, Halloween is practically tomorrow, so Y'all better get with it. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna put this stencil over my eye about where I want it to be. There it is. Now we're just gonna do the other one, simple. We will be putting white liner over it a little bit, not covering it, but just little streaks of white liner. There it is. One little dip in my character shadow was enough for both brows. So that's awesome. This is, uh, it's just called Character Shadow. It's a darker brown that I really am digging lately. We just used it for Mrs. Butterworth. So I like that color. It's a good one. It goes on, it's true to color and everything. I've had it for quite some time too. So that one lasts. Some of them don't last as well. Now we're gonna do a little contouring. We've gotta put on our blush, freckles, it's a simple face, it really is. Let's finish our brows. Let's completely do them. They're dry enough now. I've got my Ben Nye white cream pencil. And I'm just gonna do this. Brows are done. Now we've got to do a little contouring. I'm gonna go with this, the white in this contour palette and I'm just gonna hit the end of my nose. I did look at some pictures of the Coraline doll before making this video to see kind of exactly how she looked, you know, and what I needed to do. So I'm gonna be hitting the end of my nose here with the white. with that little tip we just made. I'm 
I am not a contour expert and I'm okay to say that. I watched some of these videos about contouring, but I mean, it's over my head. It looks pretty good, but I mean, I would say uh, outside of eyelashes, that would be one thing that I don't really understand very well. That's not to say that I don't try or that I don't want to learn. I'm trying to figure it out. <laughs> That's what that is. I'm just trying to figure it out. So we'll see how it turns out. I don't think it's going to turn out too badly. It's kind of, it did make my nose look a little pointier. Kind of pointier, more upturned. So I'm going to take, now when Coraline first got the doll, this doll was dirty. So what we're going to be doing is going around our face kind of and around the bottom of our chin, kind of in the crevices where dirt would collect if you were a dirty doll. And we're going to go with a, a darker brown here for that. Not on the neck, just right under your chin. Well, there's a lot of great costume ideas for Coraline. Uh, I was thinking the ghost children. If you had a group, one of you could be Coraline and there's the ghost children. There's so many different characters. Um, the mom and the dad or the other mother and the other father. Uh, YB, if you're a couple, you can be YB and Coraline. So there's really a lot of options there for couples costumes or group costumes it's kind of cool actually i love a costume where you can have a lot of ideas if you go as groups or couples remember we're going to have our buttons on our eyes so we don't really need much there i am going to hit this contour up a little bit where i kind of went over it it looks kind of crazy right now but that's how always how it looks before we're done. Now I'm going to hit my cheek with some pink. Cute little pinky color. And with this, I do want it a little bold. So we're kind of going up around the eye with this. It's almost like a pink all the way around the eye. The last thing we're going to do is put our button eyes on. If you love Tim Burton too, I also have a Tim Burton playlist you can look at. Um, there's some Tim Burton ideas and there will be more this year. So there's that. Now we're gonna do our mouth. I have this sort of nude lipstick that I'm using. The doll had kind of a pinky lip, but then it went off into sort of a, a stitched mouth on the sides. So I'm gonna use the same color for the stitching. And then we're gonna give ourselves some freckles. So here goes with the stitching. I'm using a small brush for this. I'm really excited to see what it looks like with the buttons on the eyes. <laughs> if you want to, when you do stitches sometimes, it kind of brings it out if you put white next to it, next to your stitches. I do have that Coraline song in my head. Not Coraline, but the one that's in the beginning of the movie, the instrumental, the, the chorus, sort of ominous sounding. Now let's add our freckles. Typically if I'm adding a freckle, I like a liquid liner. But this is what I have. I have the Ben Nye eyebrow pencil. It should be pretty good. And her freckles are kind of big. Here we are. Time to put on our button eyes. Now, when you're doing this, again, you're going to be very liberal with your spirit gum. Because you want them to stay on. And these... You can actually see through too, no problem. I made the holes and the buttons big enough that I could see through. Because if they're real small, you won't be able to see through them. And you're just gonna wanna hold it there for a solid minute or two until it dries. At first it's gonna get, it's gonna be kind of hard to open and close your eyes. Your eyelashes are gonna be hitting the button, but you'll get used to it. It's not bad. 
<laughs> All dressed up and ready for photos. Thank you so much for joining me again today. I hope you really enjoyed today's look. I think it turned out great. It's gonna turn out great on you too. Don't forget, there's gonna be a new costume every Wednesday. So make sure you're subscribed because Halloween is right around the corner. That does it for today's episode. I'll see you next time.